so dear children so today we are going to discuss about the uh, general property general properties of the uh, pivot element halogen so halogen is uh, children halogen is the very very important chapter for the examination point of view as well as entrance examination so this revision is very very compulsory so i will uh, recommend so please go through the ncert book properly as well as then you're getting uh, your class notes okay so here i will give you the uh, almost whatever the important points for the full revision so one of the important point is uh, general characteristics so uh, which are the element coming under group 17 so you should know all with the order wise uh, first one is fluorine uh, then uh, chlorine then bromine and then iodine then astatine so chlorine is the gas chlorine also gas and the bromine is the liquid while the iodine and astatine these are the solid forms and these are called as the halogen the halogen elements uh, so those uh, elements which are forming the sea salt forming elements and astatine this is the radioactive elements let us see the electronic uh, configurations. If you see the all halogens, uh, they have a uh, last uh, uh, sour having the P5 electrons. So fluorine having two five. Similarly, uh, chlorine will having the three five. So the bromine will having four P5. So all having three four P5. If you see the general uh, physical state. So in uh, physical state, if you're going uh, down the group, so intermolecular force in halogens are weak. When you go down the groups, you can see these two are gases, uh, liquid and iodine is automatic solids. If you see atomicity, all are diatomic in nature, abundance. Now they are very reactive nature, so they won't found in free nature, obviously. So in the earth crust, what is the uh, uh, order? Order is flowing is the highest and last is asteroid. Asteroid obviously is your radioactive elements. And if you see the colors, uh, they will absorb the light in the visible range. If you give the visible light, so the, they will absorb light and they will uh, go into, into the after absorbing lights, it will form the excited states and they will show these colors. So flowing is so pale yellow, so pale yellow, Cl2 is so yellow is green and Br2 is so red is brown. So this is more yellow, this is uh, yellow mixed with green, uh, brown, then deep violet. Next is your metallic character next property. So they are uh, non-metals but its metallic character increases down to means iodine is more metallic than that of fluorine. Now next is your oxygen state, only fluorine is minus 1, remaining is changing. So for chlorine it is a minus 1 to plus 6, not plus 6, it will be your plus 7. So you have to make correction, they have a chlorine having plus 7 state is also there. Similarly bromine also having plus 7 state also, bromine also plus 7. Iodine also plus 7, astine minus 1, plus 1 and plus 5. So astatine the radioactive elements, element, so we don't have uh, that much uh, your compounds with the astatine. Bond energy bond length, so if you see the bond length increases from uh, fluorine to iodine, so FF bond length is again it is increasing or why it is increasing because uh, size of the iodine is bigger, so definitely um, bond length is bigger. If you see in terms of energy, so chlorine is the highest bond enthalpy because of its uh, here the electronic repulsions take place, so its energy is decreased down where in case of chlorine it is your high. So due to small size, uh, the inter-electronic repulsion between the non-bonding uh, electrons are high in case of fluorine. In the case of fluorine, inter repulsion is very high. So, its bond is weak and its bond is weakened as compared to chlorine. So, highest is chlorine. This is very, very important question. Please note it down. And in case of density, it increases down the group in a regular fashion. So, first is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So, like this increases. And uh, now, uh, so if you see uh, atomic radius, this is uh, volume, negativity, reductions, so all are in the same order. Uh, density oxidizing power itself also so all are decreased down the group even solubility also next is your ionization potential so the potential of halogens they are very high and it is uh, decreases down the group this means that uh, fluorine having the most highest uh, electron ionization potential so iodine having uh, this uh, plus one and plus three state the two uh, state is there one is plus one and plus three and so they form the compound icl so it is icl so iodine chloride, ICN, IPO4, they are the compound formed by the this iodine. So in molten state, these compounds conduct electricity. So they ICL, ICN, IPO3, all they can conduct electricity. And definitely they are more metallic, so they show the ionic characters. If you see the electron affinity, so the uh, chlorine will be the highest, uh, then fluorine, bromine, iodine. Why chlorine highest? Very important question because uh, size of fluorine is very, very small. Why? Due to uh, small size and high electron density in fluorine, the extra electron which are added um, in the uh, atoms is uh, they, will feel, they will feel more electron electron repulsion. So, when you add electra, extra electron to fluorine, so inter electron repulsion is more, so due to which uh, their electron uh, affinity is smaller than that of chlorine. Solubility, we see that uh, halogens are soluble in water and they will follow the order.
So down the group, uh, fluorine is the highest soluble and iodine is the lowest one. And uh, this solubility of iodine increases when you add uh, in potassium iodide. When you add potassium iodide in iodine, then iodine will easily increase. They'll combine to form the Ki3 and we can convert to K plus and I3 mass. Very, very important compounds. Uh, so normally in exams they are asking what is the structure of I3 mass. So obviously it is a structure is a linear molecule. And in organic solvent you can dissolve this Ki very well like CS2, CSCl3 chloroform. So Cl2, Br2 and iodine more soluble and they can give you colorless solution. Cl2 will give you yellow while Br2 will give you iodine and I2 will give you violet color. So we will see uh, in qualitative analysis uh, this uh, iodine is giving layer test. That is the precipitate, lower level is precipitate. Now, uh, property of halide ions. So, the property is the following disorder. So, flowing is the most you can say uh, oxidizing agent as per the iodine, like basic character, more reducing character, more and heat of hydrogen, right? This is there. But uh, flowing does not show the reducing characters. The other decreasing order, right? So, this is decreasing order down the group. But fluorine will not show much reducing nature. So, reducing nature means uh, you can say that uh, Cl, Br, and iodine. Okay, so this is uh, down the group increasing. Iodine will show the most reducing agent. Okay, so uh, flowing will show the most oxidizing characters like this one. Heat of hydrogen is also decreases down the group. If you see the bond with other elements like halogen when react with the metals with the low ionization potential, if the ionization potential is very less, they'll form the ionic compounds. And this ionic compound again, it will uh, down the group is like this one. So MF is most ionic and MI is most covalent. So if you have heard. Uh, the conditions like Fajan rule, uh, so in Fajan rule says that uh, so the size of the anion is more and cation is more, there is more covalent. So it is falling over here, this is more covalent and MF is more, uh, you can say it is more ionic. The more ionic, it having the more melting point and boiling. Obviously, if you know the Fajan rule, you can say it is very halogens with metals of high, uh, you can say ionization potentials and non metals they form the covalent bonds. Now we will see the compounds of halogens. A couple of halogens, first one is hydroacids. So these halogens are directly combined with the halogens to form the halogen compounds. When halogen is reacting with hydrogen, so they will form the haloacids. Now we will see next is oxyacids. Here we can see the oxyacids and the oxyacids are HOX, uh, H, uh, XO2, HXO3, HXO. This is ordered here. So HXO, HXO2. So if you increase one one oxygen, this order becomes. Uh, oxidation number of the halogen so one is HOX is a plus one the next is halos S is plus three and when you are using three is plus five then seven is plus seven fluorine means so only one oxy acid like the other is not possible in chlorine they will show all the acids like this is so uh, OHCl, OHCLO this is the OHCLO2 then OHCLO3 Similarly, HBr, uh, bromine also shows the oxy uh, acids of bromine, iodine also oxy acid bromines, okay. So, for salt is hypohalite, this is called halite, halite and perhalite. Perhalite means they have per, uh, peroxy bond is there. Now, next is the trends in the following properties. If you see these properties, uh, this is your uh, perhalite and then halite and then you can see halite and hypohalite. So, thermal stability is uh, increasing from like this one. So this is more stable and assistant also it is increasing from here to left to right to left but oxidizing it is decreasing from uh, your uh, left to right so this is more oxidizing and this is your less oxidizing conjugate base obtained from the above acids like this one and their stability increases with increase in oxygen so one oxygen is increasing so their stability also increases due to the greater chance of dispersal of negative charge the more is the stability of conjugate base more is the acid so if the conjugate base is more stable the acid will be more strong so like this is, this is more strong, you can see, uh, than that of XO. Now we'll see the next is the hypohalous acids. So again, these are formed in aqua solution by disproportionate. Here, uh, this halogen is undergoing disproportionate. Fluorine is not going uh, disproportionate. And remaining other atoms can go disproportionate. Acid characters and thermal stabilities will be order like this. So HCl is more stable than that of HIO, right? Hypohalides, it will uh, disproportionate in aqua solutions and they will form the halides and halides. Except for, for only fluorine, this does not go disproportionate reaction in aqueous solution. Now, hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chlorine can be obtained by heating fluorides and chlorides with the H2SO4. So, if you heat this uh, fluoride and chlorides with the H2SO4, you will get uh, the halogen acids. Like calcium fluoride with this, you will get this product, NaCl with this product. Okay, and uh, this SCL can reduce KMnO4. So this SCL acid can reduce the KMnO4. Even HBr, HI is a reducing agent. Even SCL is also a reducing agent. So this can also reduce the KMnO4. But HF cannot be reduced. 
ओके एच एफ कैन रेड्यूस सो एच बी आर एच आई रेड्यूसिंग दे कैन रेड्यूस द कॉक एच टू फोर कैन कैन नॉट बी प्रिपेयर बाई दिस मैथड राइट इज एयर एंड इवन यू कैन सी हाइड्रोजन ब्रोमाइड और एच आई वेन और एच टू एस फोर सो दे विल गिव यू बी आर टू आई टू एन एच टाइट हाइड्रो वाटर प्लस एस ओ थ्रो सो विद रिएक्शन दिस विल गिव यू एच एफ कैन नॉट गिव यू सो दे आर प्रिपेयर बाय द हाइड्रोलाइसिस ऑफ फॉस्फोरिक हेलाइस सो लाइक दिस वन सो पी एक्स थ्री प्लस ऑल्सो वी कैन प्रिपेयर टू गेट द हाइड्रोजन एसिड बट वी कैन गेट एच एफ लाइक दियर एंड विद वन प्रोडक्ट इफ यू टेक द एच एफ एंड रिएक्टिंग विद सिल्का ऑक्साइड सो एच एफ रिएक्टिंग सिल्का ऑक्साइड विल गिव यू एस आई एफ फोर एंड एस आई एफ फोर वेन रिएक्टिंग विद एच एफ टू गिव यू वाटर सॉलिबल एसिड दैट एस टू एस आई एफ फोर तो समटाइम दे आस्टिंग दिस रिएक्शन इन द एग्जामिनेशन so here is one question when you take the concentrated hcl when kept in the open air and it forms the uh, cloud of white powder what is the explanation in this case uh, hcl uh, react with the oxygen and after reacting with the oxygen they will form the cl2 chlorine gas and water so answer is uh, hcl plus o2 will give you uh, chlorine gas and this chlorine gas will form the cloud of white powder so if you see the answer answer is your a is a correct this is the correct answer Uh, remaining uh, strong effective hcl gas for the moisture air results in the forming the droplet of liquid solids so, no this is wrong answer and due to strong affinity for water and conk hcl pulls the moisture itself and moisture from top no is wrong answer uh, conk hcl uh, emits strongly smelling hcl gas also this also wrong answer only answer a is correct for this question Now let us see the properties. HF is the low boiling point, and due to intermolecular hydrogen bondings, uh, so the no boiling point. While the HCl, other hydrogen acids are gases, the boiling point for this order HF having the low boiling point, others having the high boiling point. Uh, HI, HBr, and HCl. You can mark it. HCl is the last one. Okay, and other property you can follow this trend. So the ST is the increases uh, from uh, left to right. It decreases from left to right. Reducing also decreases from left to right, and bond length also decreases from the left to right. So this is the strongest, uh, large bond length. Uh, so you can say strong reducing and strong acids. Okay, why HF is a weak acid? So answer is that because they have the strong hydrogen bonding. In HF is a weak acid because they have a strong hydrogen bonding, and H plus is not easily formed. Because bond H bond is very very strong and H bond is very very small length, so its dissociation energy is very very high. So first is strong hydrogen bonding. Second thing is bond length is very small, so strong uh, dissociation energy uh, H F has. And third is so it is always kept in the wax coated glass bottles. So H F S is kept in the wax coated glass bottles. Right, this is there. If you see the properties, uh, thermal stability will increase uh, from here. Uh, dipole point is from uh, left to right, and bond length also increases from left to right. Stability also increases from left to right. Etching of glass. So etching glass means uh, glass silica containing silica will react with HF. This is SiO2 and react with HF to give you SiF4. And when then this is reacting with HF, they'll give you H2 SiF6. So this is called as hydrofluorosilicic acid. So Si2 also react with the HF. This is called as etching of glass. So we have seen this hypohalous acids having a uh, of course reason they can't disproportionate and if you see the rate of uh, disproportionation in this one so so rate of disproportionation is highest in IO minus then that of BRO minus and CLO minus this is a more stronger H uh, this is the bond length of this uh, HCl and it's BRO you can see this is HOCl is having the larger bond length Bleaching powder when they are mixing with the HOCl, uh, it is a mixed sort of HOCl and HCl. So this is a mixed sort of these two acids. Next, the helic acids. The helic acids is a HCl and HBO. They exist in aqueous solutions. While this is a white solid, if you see the stability, so stability is you are uh, according to left to right. This is the acid strain. This is more stronger acid. This is weak acids. They are a strong oxidizant. And if you see XO3 plus X in reacting with HCl, they will give you chlorine plus water. And their salt NaCl3 is a powerful, a powerful weed killer. This is the powerful weed killers and KCO3. This also this is called as bartholate salt, and it is used in firework and matches as oxidizant. Even if you see HiO3 is called iodic acid, HiO4 is called per iodic acid. So you have to remember all these things. One is a powerful weed killer. One is the bartholate salt. Now next is our per helic acid. Per helic acid, this you can obtain by the electrolytic oxidation of the halides. So this is the halides, and if you do the electrolytic, you will get the your uh, uh, per halides CLO4 minus. 
even IO3 will give you IO4 minus. So this per borate is obtained per borate. This you can obtain uh, with the uh, fluorine in basic solution. So this is a BrO3 minus with fluorine. So you will get the per borate. This is the per borate. And uh, in uh, which is the strong oxidation. So a strong oxygen order is IO4 is the strongest oxygen. Now we will see the structure. If you see the structure, this is HOCl, HOCl is HClO3, two lone pair. This chloric acid is HClO3. S1 and this is a perchloric acid. So this is a stronger acid than, but perchloric is stronger acid than the H2SO4. Why? So obviously, uh, if you see the oxygen state, so Cl4 is having plus 7 and sulfur having plus 6. So definitely, this is having the strongest oxygen state. Also, moreover, Cl is more electronegative than sulfur. So this is a stronger acid than H2SO4. Next, we will see the oxides. They will form a different type of oxides. Halogens do not combine directly with the oxygen. So halogens cannot combine oxygens. They are prepared by the indirect method. So uh, you will get a different oxide for fluorine, OF2 and O2F2. And Cl, we have different type of oxygen states. Cl2O, ClO3, ClO2, like this, so many oxygen states are there. And uh, next is your Cl2O6, Cl2O7, even BrO2, BrO2, BrO3, all these are there. ClO2 is paramagnetic, remember? ClO2 is paramagnetic, so they have uh, 19 electrons in valence electrons. Okay, so due to this 19 valence electrons, they are paramagnetic, they are having odd number, odd number of electrons. And in Cl also, they have different bond angles. So one is Cl2O, ClO2 minus ClO3, like this is there. And if you see the structures, structure will be like this one. Uh, ClO, this is the 112 angle, ClO2, 118. So here bond angle is more than this one. And this is the Cl2O7, like this is the structure. Of, and all oxides are strongly oxidizing and they can decompose with oxygen when you are heating now after oxides next is the interhalogen compounds so interhalogen compounds will form ax uh, ax3 ax5 and ax10 remember 1357 you can remember halogens combine in terms of 1357 uh, and the structure of hybridization will be so ax will be linear ax3 will be uh, t shaped to sp3 A axp5 will be 5 is sp3 d2 so square pyramidal and ax7 so they have one one pair so see, here we have two lone pairs and ax7 will be sp3 they will be pentagonal bipedal you can see the structures here the structures and interhalogen compounds are very very reactive than halogen compounds except fluorine okay why because ax bond even fluorine means uh, because ax bond is very weaker than bond than uh, this halogen bonds there that is why interhalogen compounds are very very uh, stronger so here are the examples of interhalogen compounds which is very very reactive so they are covalent, where they are more, more reactive. Why reactive? Because uh, they are unstable, bond is weak. So, okay, they, but they are not much explosive. Uh, stronger oxidizing and diametric in nature. So they are the properties. Sometimes they are asking about the interhalogen compounds. What are the properties of interhalogen compounds? You have to give these answers. Uh, they are prepared by the direct combination of the halogens like this one. So we can see the preparations. Okay, so they will give Cl2, F2, ClF, ClF, PRF, IF and FF. Now they are asking out of these four, which is more polar. So obviously IUF is more polar because uh, bond is more weaker, for most electronegative. So sometimes they ask like this question also. Second question, third question. So please uh, note down all these questions. Properties they are asking, uh, reactivity they are asking, uh, polarity they are asking. So by the action of halogens on lower interhalogens, you will get the ClF3. Next is polyhalide ions. Okay, they also make the polyhalide ions. So, uh, ions which contain more two halogen atoms are called polyhalide ions, like Ki plus I2. They will give you uh, Ki3 and Ki3 will convert to K plus and I3 minus. Other examples are uh, Br3 minus, Cl3 minus. So, these are the uh, polyhalide ions. ICl2 minus, IBr2 minus, ICl4 minus, BrF4 minus, IF minus, IF, I6 minus. Next is iodine cations. Iodine also form the I plus N plus so 1 and plus 3 cations. And due to less NSA energy, so they like uh, tri state iodine, ICl43, IP43 also been isolated. Similarly, we have pseudo halogens and pseudo halides. So we have pseudo halogens, pseudo halides. So this substance has behave like a halogen. So they are called as like the pseudo halogens or pseudo halides. These are the examples. Pseudo halogens are CN uh, hold twice cyanogen, OCN hold twice oxy cyanogen, SCN hold twice SE, CN hold twice sereno cyanogen. Pseudo halide ions are CN cyanide. Cyanide is a very a good complexing and reducing agent. Okay, towards the metal species. CN is very good complexing. So you will study uh, study in coordinate chemistry. 
or coordination components how this is a complexing and reducing agent ocn is called as cyanate similarly cno minus is also there scn so they are the pseudo halide ions n3 which is called as the azide ions but uh, rco minus rco minus not called as the pseudo halide ions because this is not a pseudo halide right so sometimes they mix with the group which is the following pseudo halide so uh, this acetate ion is not the uh, so you can say uh, not a state RCO minus not your uh, pseudo halides. We cannot say acetate RCO minus. Now we see the uh, uh, like a sequence spice or halogens. Chlorine is called like the super halogen discovered by the Moisson. Then if you see the combined state is more reactive, so there are three elements. So ores, uh, pros part, lyolite, and pros part, uh, pros uh, flora partite, petite. So this found in the soil, a river, bones, and teeth, and even you can find the bones and teeth of animals. You see the preparations, uh, the different preparations. One is tennis method. So, with the help of a uh, few sodiums or uh, potassium hydrogen fluoride, this is between the graphite electrodes. Uh, so framing salt is KHF2. This is the source from which you can get the fluorine. So, this will undergo electrolysis to give you electrolysis uh, KHF2. Framing salt will give KF and HF. HF will give you H plus and fluorine. So, H plus will add uh, cathode, it will undergo reduction, while fluorine will give you uh, add cathode. So, it will give you fluorine gas. And sometimes this uh, HF, we have one impurities called as uh, uh, sodium fluoride having some impurities HF. So this uh, impurities is removed with the reaction of HF and uh, also you will get the NaHF2. So sometimes uh, HF is also present. So this is removed by the sodium fluoride to become NaHF2 and this HF is also removed. Next is our uh, Whitley, so Whitlock gray methods. So, electrolysis of fused KHF2, it is carried in copper cell. So, copper cell is electrically heated and this is serving the purpose of cathodes and here anode is graphite. Other method is your, uh, modern method is your fused mixture of the KF and HF carried in the steel vessels. Here anode is your graphite. So, you are studying in detail. Let us see the properties, pale yellow gas, uh, it can be condensed to pale yellow liquid and then pale solid, very reactive compounds. Right. So, why is it very reactive? Flowing because this is most electronegative atoms, size very small, their bond dissociation energy is also very less. So, this all this nature makes the fluid more uh, negative. So, you are uh, reactive. So, it's most active can direct come the metals and non metals like uh, aluminium, salt, they are given. Okay, and they also, also form the protective coating in case of copper mercury fluoride. With hello, genone, they can also react. So they have three halides with genone. So we can see uh, JDX2, XCF2, XCF4, and genone uh, hexafluorides. And you can see the structures. So already structures uh, is there. This XCF2, this is a linear, uh, symmet linear symmetrical. This is your square planar XCF4, XCF6, F6, your distorted octahedral. Now hydrogens in the dark reaction, so in the dark uh, it can also react, very reactive, so you can see HF is formed. With water they can also react, it will give HF plus O2 and uh, fluorine with water will give HF plus O3 also, they are giving both O2 and O3. There is oxidizing nature, so with oxidizing nature, uh, so why is oxidizing? Because it is uh, low dissociation energies uh, and uh, fluorine is an exothermic reaction and uh, a bond bond is very very weak, uh, strong bond and low dissociation energy is there. So, fluorine is very, very oxidizing nature, so we can easily uh, form the uh, fluoride ions. So, KL3 uh, reacting this compound, so it will give you H2F2. Here it is from the dimerization, and the KCl plus F2 also give you KH compounds. With alkali, they also react, with alkali also reacting, water also reacting, hydrogen also reacting. So, with alkali means sodium hydroxide, they will form the F2O and sodium fluoride. If you take the concentrated, directly is your NaF and F2O. But if you take the concentrated, it will give you sodium fluoride and oxygen gas. So this is compound substance they are seeing the examination. So with ammonia, they'll form the N2 and uh, here N2 plus HF and some amount of NF3 also produced, but this is not explosive. With uh, sulfide, they'll form SF6. With hydrocarbon, they'll form the, uh, with hydrocarbon means methane gas will reacting, they'll form the HF and CF4. So, fluorine is not carried out in presence of nitrogen uh, because it will dilute fluorine and, for, and uh, catalyst the copper gas. Fluorine use fluorine derivatives, they are using lubricant, refrigerant, fire extinguisher, even fungicide, germicides, uh, dyes, and plastics. And for separation, U235, they are forming UF6 from the natural uraniums. This is also used for preparation of Teflon. And uh, in calcium, when they are reacting with the excess of fluoride ions, they will form the fluorocystis. 
with uh, excess fluorine with calcium they will react and they'll form the fluoroacid is in human body so we should not take too much fluorine otherwise we get the affected by this disease fluorine next will chlorine compound chlorine compound uh, only will take a freon that is a chlorine so freon uh, freons is called as chlorofluorocarbon that uh, of methane and ethane they are called as freons so they are very very uh, very uh, non reactive freons are non reactive non corrosive and easily liquefied which can be converted into liquid so they are called freons freon 12 is very common and prepared as a ccl4 plus sbs3 and ccl2 f2 and this is used in refrigerant and propellant for the cooling one is called magic acid fso3 and h sbf5 they are the strong acid known as the magic acid the whole strong compound is called magic acid as you can remember as a uh, gk question now we'll see the chlorine so chlorine was actually discovered by the uh, seal by heating the scl acid uh that is called muriatic acid and mno2 so mno2 plus scl will give you chlorine gas and this gas was named as oxymuriatic acid so davy uh, established it nature and called as chlorine so davy completely uh, called is chlorine occurrence uh, very very reactive uh, reactor did not occur in nature free state it is widely distributed as a chlorides nsl is very very common salt present in sea water and rock salt you can see the chlorine uh, reaction preparation So with the help of concentrated HCl uh, like uh, MnO2, so it will give you MnO2 and Cl2 gas with KMnO4, potassium dichromate, even some bleaching powder, sodium NaOCl, uh, lead oxide, Pb3O4. So all are giving chlorine. Regarding NaOCl, this is uh, aqua solution. If you take aqua solutions, it is called javel water. Javel water. NaOCl is called as the javel water, and on heating it will give you NaCl3 and NaCl. This is called chloride compounds. So this hypohalite chloride will give you chloride ion. So this sometimes they ask this question also. In place of HCl uh, mixture, you can use the NaCl plus conch H two S can be used. Like NaCl plus MnO two and this H two S four, you will get the sodium hydrogen sulfate MnO two and plus chlorine also obtained. NaCl plus KCl when reacting with the concentrated H two S four and uh, this dichromate, so you will get the sodium sulfate KCl four and one more compound is called. CrO2 Cl2. This CrO2 Cl2 is called as chromyl chloride, which is a dark red, a red liquid. So this is very very important compound, chromyl chloride. You see the manufacture. Manufacture is different process: uh, Weldon process, uh, Deacon's process, electro uh, lighting process. There are three processes are there. So in Weldon process, the pyrolusite is heated with the concentrated acid. We get the Cl2 gas. So Deacon's process in this HCl is oxidized in presence of oxygen to give uh, in presence of CO CO2 catalyst. So you will get the chloride gas. And in electrolytic process, we have to use uh, Nelson cell. So in this brine solutions convert into CO2 gas. So NaCl is there, and Na is at at cathode will give you a uh, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, and at anode they will give you chlorine gas. So you will get anode at chlorine gas is there. Okay, and even you can get the pure chlorine so by heating the this one AuCl3 or uh, lead uh, say platinum chloride in a hard glass tube. This is the reactions. You will get the chlorine by this method also. So uh, this is called chlorine, and uh, if you see the properties, the properties here, yellow is uh, green gas, color is green, yellow is green. It is collected by the upward displacement of air, poisonous nature. Chlorine is very very poisonous, soluble in waters. So we should not drink chlorine. It is the aqua solution called as chlorine water. So on careful cooling, it will give you chlorine hydrate. So if you give you if you cool it, you will get a chlorine hydrate, right? Cl to eight H two molecular water. Action of water, they will give you HOCl and plus HCl. So with moisture, they will give HOCl and HOCl. Uh, it is a very strong oxidizing agent. It will uh, convert any colored matter by giving uh, reaction with oxygen to colorless matter. So HOCl is a very uh, strong bleaching agent. Convert the colored substance into the into the colorless matter. The bleaching of action is oxidation due to nascent oxygen. You see the hydrogen. So H2 plus Cl2 in presence of sunlight will be HCl. They will combine explosive. This is the action explosive reactions. But in presence of charcoal, if you use the charcoal, so it can react at the room temperature. This special reaction KBr plus Cl give you uh, this uh, KCl plus Br2. So this is your um, uh, again reactions again in presence of sodium hydroxide in cold condition. So in cold conditions, uh, this uh, reaction with Cl to give you NaCl plus NaOCl. NaOCl occurs or is is called as a uh, javel water. Uh, it is also used as a bleaching agent in the hot and concentrated uh, your Ac so uh, uh, Cl2 with NaOH will give you NaCl plus NaCl3. Okay, even 
if you take the potassium hydroxide with Cl2, they will give you uh, this is KCl3 uh, plus KCl plus H2. So, okay, and this KCl3, you know, it is work in your fireworks and safety, which is already we have uh, discussed. Okay, right here. And even uh, they sometimes they ask you questions like, um, suppose, um, see, uh, which of the following is the maximum pH? Suppose they are compound NaClO, this is Javel water. Javel water, NaCl2, NaCl3, NaCl4, which is strong acid. So, out of this, NaClO is the having the maximum pH. If a dissolved in water, its pH value increases. Why? Because this is yes, salt which is made from the sodium hydroxide in HClO. HClO is a weak acid and sodium hydroxide is the strong base. So, a strong base, uh, if you dissolve in water, this will give you the basic solution and pH is always increases. Even they are asking some questions, Ki plus I2 will give you what? So, it will dissolve with iodine uh, water, they will give you Ki3 and Ki3 is a solid complex. Already, this also we have discussed. If you take the H2S, uh, it will give you HCl plus sulfur with sulfur dioxide dry. So, they will give you H2O2 and Cl. This is called as, this is called as sulfuryl chloride. In carbon monoxide, they will give you CO plus CoCl2, CoCl2. And oxidizing property also Cl will have. So, SO2 plus Cl2 will give you H2SO4 uh, with Fe, uh, FeSO4, Fe uh, ferric sulfate. Uh, with hypo, they will give you sodium uh, tetrathionate. So, Na2, Na2S4O6 when they are reacting with the uh, Cl2. So, Na2H2O3 plus uh, iodine will give you this one plus sodium iodine but uh, Cl2 plus water will give you sodium sulfate plus acid and sulfur. With ammonia, when ammonia access, nitrogen gas is obtained, ammonium chloride is there but when chlorine access, you will get the NCl3 plus HCl. So, sometimes they ask question, this two is very, very important. Ammonia access, you will get ammonium chloride when chlorine access, you will get the NCl3 plus HCl, right? Now, one question is also there, when they are reacting with the HGO. So, mercury oxide plus Cl2 plus water is chlorine water. So, what product is formed? You will get the HOCl and HGCl2. So, the other product you will get from the HGO. Uses, it is a bleaching agent, disinfectant, manufacture of the chloroform, CCL4, DAT, and anti-knocking agents. Bleaching powder, poisonous gas, COCl2 is formed. Tear gas, CCL3, NO2, mustard gas. So, this is the mustard gas, CCL, uh, C2H4, uh, SCS, uh, S, sulfur, then C2H4Cl. So this is C2H4 on both sides, sulfur, this is sulfur and both sides is chlorine, right? You can even you can prepare the U-chlorine. What is U-chlorine? U-chlorine is a mixture of chlorine and chlorine dioxide and it is obtained by heating the KCl3 plus uh, SCL. This KCl3 which is also called as bartholate salt and bartholate plus SCL you will get the KCl and Cl2, ClO2. So this mixture is called U-chlorine and sometimes uh, silver chlorate plus Cl2 in dry form so on heating 90 degrees Celsius you will get silver chloride and ClO2 plus oxygen Cl2O2 is also obtained by the silver chloride also and this chloride will give you Cl2 gas even uh, chlorine also used as the anti chlor what is the anti chlor anti chlor is the compound which will remove the unreacted chlorine from a material like a hypo. So, hypo is called as the anti chlorine, we can remove the unreacted chlorine. Even some other compound is called as sodium NaSO3, uh, potassium uh, hydrogen sulfide, sodium metabal sulfide, sodium thiosulfate, H2O2. So, residual hypochlorites, all this is after the chlorine uh, based bleaching to prevent the further action. So, this chlorine is removed so that the further bleaching is stopped. So, this is a uh, used anti chlorides are used in a uh, swing pool, hair samples. So, these anti chlorides are used to remove the uh, this remaining unreacted chlorine. So, it's a very important use of uh, chlorine. Now, after chlorine, next is the bromine. Bromine was discovered by Ballard in 1826. Uh, Again, this also found in the combined state like uh, bromides and uh, in seawater but in seawater carnalites and some bromo carnalites in germany in sulfur solid forms in china and maximo in silver mines as a agbr uh, preparation so by preparation is by heating lime method is uh, kbr and plus uh, in acidic form with mno2 pyrolocytes you will get the compound bromine kbr plus cl2 uh, with reacting also will get the bromine this is the lab laboratory method next is the manufacture you can use the carnalite the carnalite is the KCl plus MgCl2 with 6 molecular water. So, they contain sodium, potassium, magnesium and this is called B-turn. So, KBR reacted with the Cl2. We will get the Br2 in the MgBr2 will give you this one and uh, this is the apparatus in which uh, Br2 is obtained from by passing the Cl2 gas like this is there. So, you will study detail in uh, your uh, study in your classes. This is the, the method how to get the bromine a short methods. Here, uncondensed paper is passed through the tower which is packed with the moist and fillings and these are absorbed and to yield the ferroferic bromides. FeBr2 plus Fe3, something is there, you will get the 
compound and finally you get the chlorine gas other method is by electrolysis of the small so above mother liquor so it is mgbr2 so from here mother liquor you can also get the bromine even if some mgcl2 is decomposed the cl2 evolved react with the mgbr2 to give the bromine so this you will study in the your normal chapters other method is to, to get the bromine from the sea water sea water means the sea is concentrated when the salt is separated crystals the mother liquor contain mgbr2 and uh, it, this is treated as above process to get the bromine in america sea water is acidified by uh, five with the 0.1 percent of h 4 and here again chlorine is passed the vapor liberty is called passed in and to co3 solutions so mgbr2 plus cl2 you will get the bromine gas again bromine gas is sodium carbonate to get the NaBrO3 and this NaBr uh, sodium NaBrO3 with HCl when you are passing HCl so you will get the again bromine gas now properties bromine is a heavy dark brown liquid and it gives a irritating vapor density is 3.2 is very uh, almost low density it is soluble in water and gives the bromine water so 3.6 percent as 20 celsius saturated solution bromine on cooling will give you bromine hydrate they also give the hydrate br2 it is so like a chlorine also they will give you bromine hydrate if you see the chemical properties uh, reacting with the, with the hydrogen at a room temperature hbr oxidizing nature also there so on under ordinary concept they won't react okay right it will in presence of oxidizable substance like a br2 plus water hbr so in presence of it will oxidize the SO2 convert to SO4 so to SO2 will be SO4 if you use the sulfide sulfide will convert it to uh, sulfate thiosulfide to sulfate uh, arsenide so thiosulfide to sulfate S2O3 to SO4 arsenide ASO3 to arsenide and hydrogen sulfide to sulfur even with uh, alkali so in presence of your uh, cold it will give you Br plus BrO but hot Br plus Br3 so hot is Br3 is plus 5 oxygen state for bromine is having and in this way uh, bromine having uh, so plus 5 this is there and is having your plus 1 1 is plus 1 1 plus 5 in other cases is minus 1 and minus 1 it also undergo displacement reactions it will go KBr plus I2 and even uh, react with the ammonia to give you NH4 Br4 like uh, chlorine also react with the ammonia with organic compound also give, uh, reacts so it will react with the only compound to give the C2H4 Br2 and even is react with the alkanes to give the bromide plus SBr. So with also only compound they are reacting C2H4 plus is like this one. Even bromine is also react with the moist starch paper to give the brown colors or uh, it will be brown uh, Br2 plus moist starch will give KI paper violet color. So after this if you use the KI paper the KI paper becomes violet this will shows that uh, starch test. Uses uh, it is used for making the tetraethylate, uh, which is anti knocking agent. This is the tetraethylate. Uh, this is the so NaC ethyl bromide plus uh, this lead alloy. You will get the TL, and uh, next is NAB, NABR, and KBR used as a sedatives. NABR is a photography. Ethylene bromide increases the efficiency of TL, NABR, and both are also used as a sedatives. Now, you see, next is iodine. Iodine is uh, discovered by Cortius okay so it is occurs not also not found in free state it is occurring in presence of seaweed in seaweed is 0 0.5 to 1.3 percent less is there but maximum you will get the uh, iodine from the seaweed only okay seaweed uh, the plant is laminaria digitata is the name of the plant where you will get the sodium iodide as a product and from sodium iodide you can extract the iodine second is caliche so it is a uh, chili salt peter as a so nao3 here you can get the iodine preparation lime method is Again, uh, potassium iodide H2SO4 and react with the, this MnO2, so you will get the iodine gas. So, iodine always having the reducing properties. So, you can manufacture from the seaweed, seaweed you can get from the sodium iodide and you will get the iodine here, sodium NH4 from calich. So, it is the NaIO3, which is chili salt bitter. So, here you will get the iodine. And extra amount of this NaSO4 is there, so it is reacting with. Uh, so, if extra amount of NaSO3 is to be added, so if you add more extra amount, this one, so it will react with the iodine and it, if we present in excess, so it will react with the iodine, so you will get the hydrogen iodine like this one. So, we won't give extra amount of sodium hyposulfide. Purification, uh, it contains uh, impurities like Cl2, Br2, has all their containing, so you have to remove these uh, compounds. Uh, by distillation with Ki, Ki using, so Ki will react with Cl2 and Br2 and then again you will get the iodine gases. So, Ki is added to remove the uh, purifying this thing. Even Ki is reacting with the iodine gases, 
okay so they'll form the ki3 and even i2 also react with the ccl4 so they'll form the lower layer and which is the uh, precipitate uh, it will form the layer uh, test which gives the color violet color it will give you a layer test water is removed by distillations uh, over uh, h2so4 and again this is purified by the sublimations properties it is the dark uh, violet shining solid metallic luster so i didn't have the metal luster it is sublime on so heating 114 degrees celsius metallic character so it will form the plus 1 plus 3 uh, ions if you see the chemical properties sol slightly soluble water so if it dissolves in presence of ki so it is like this one. so k plus i3 is there okay so but the fluorine uh, uh, fluorine cannot form this type of compounds fluorine cannot form this type of compounds why because fluorine do not have vacant d orbitals and fluorine will not accept electrons so fluorine is not forming this type of compound only iodine is forming because they have vacant electrons and they can easily accept electrons it can combine with elements like hydrogens like phosphorus even you can participate in displacement reactions like a fluorine and a chlorine and bromine so it will also form KiO3, KiO3, right? And uh, if in KClO3, uh, they are saying KClO3 and KBrO3, okay? Now, this is KiO3 and KiO3, uh, KiO3 and KClO3, so which is uh, more uh, stable. So, um, KClO3 is less stable because here iodine is plus 5 state and chlorine is plus 5 state. So, this is your uh, Cl plus 5 is less stable than that of I plus 5. So, this is your less stable, this is your more stable. That's why reaction goes forward reactions. With uh, alkalis, they'll form the NaSOI and here the, with concentrated IO3. This you remember, in cold uh, IO uh, OI and uh, uh, concentrated in hot, they'll form IO3. And HA hypoiodate, it can decompose even room temperature. If it's unstable, it can decompose easily. NaOI, this will uh, combine with NaI to give you uh, NaIO3. So, first is cold this one, then there will be NaIO3. With ammonia, they will form the NS3 uh, explosive compound. This is explosive compound. And again, this will form the nitrogen iodine in NH4I. They can also react with the hypo. So, hypo reacting, they will form the sodium tetrathionate and NaI. If you take the strong oxidizing agent, it can also react with strong agent like a HNO3, or O3, and chlorine. So, they will produce the iodic acid. So, I2 plus nitric acid, HIO3, is called periodic acid. So, and this is your uh, KIE, uh, uh, iodic acid, and this is a co with copper sulfate, uh, CuI2. And CuI2 will give you Cu2, I2 plus I2. So, like this reaction is, goes with the iodine. Uses in medicines, used as a tincture of iodine, iodex, and iodoform. Uh, solution of KI iodine is, it is used for treatment of goether. Tincture of iodine is a mixture of uh, this OZ iodine and half OZKI and one pin rectified speed. So this is the mixture present in the tincture of iodine. Next com important compound is the bleaching powder COOCL2 H2O and uh, composition of bleaching powder is COOCL whole twice. This is COOCL2 and this is the, uh, if you simplify it, it is simplify form and COOCL2 and CSO and COO. If you simplify this whole form and with two molecules of water, you will get the COOCL2, right? How do you manufacture? Manufacture is, uh, you take the slacked limes, react with the Cl2, you will get CO, Cl2 and H2O. And even you can also use the uh, calcium oxide with the chlorine. If you use calcium oxide with the chlorine, you will get CO, Cl2 and CO, Cl whole twice. This O, Cl whole twice, this is CA, o, Cl2. So both are different. Manufacturing, uh, there is a process called Hessen Clear plant and Bachmann's uh, plant. These processes are there. Properties, yellowish uh, powder, uh, strong smell of chlorine. So, it is react with the dilute acids or carbon dioxide. It will it becomes a calcium carbon that is released. Chlorine is released and with H2SO4, calcium sulfide and again chlorine is released. This chlorine is called as the available chlorine. And this contains 35 to 40% of available chlorine. The value of which goes on decreasing when you keep the powder for a uh, time. So, if you keep the bleaching powder for a long time, if you undergo auto oxidation, it will form the calcium chloride plus calcium chloride. So, yeah, so calcium, this bleaching powder cannot be kept for a long time in air. Now, here you can note it down. This is a CaClO3 is called as calcium chlorate. O CaClO3 whole twice. If you take CaOCl whole twice, it is called hypochlorate, and Ca, uh, or ClO2 and whole twice is called chloride. So, uh, ClO2 is called chloride, OCl whole twice is called hypochlorite, and ClO3 is called as chloride. So, you have to remember sometimes they are asking. And CaOCl2 is called as calcium oxy uh, chloride. So this is the bleaching powder calcium oxychloride. So this will, in presence of uh, calcium cobalt chloride, it will give decomposed to give you CaCl2 and oxygen. 
in presence of uh, dilute acid we lose oxygen so this is a will give you calcium chloride sulfate and hclo so hclo again it will uh, so very good uh, bleaching agent it will give you nascent oxygen again it will um, convert the colorless sub substance to the so a color substance to colorless substance so any colored substance will convert into colorless substance Again, the uh, this one uh, bleaching powder can react with the ethanol and acetone. This is the ethanol acetone. They will convert to chloroform. So with the uh, acetone and ethanol, they will give you chloroform. You have to remember they, they are asking question in the examination. It will not form the clear solution with water, and it will form the aqueous solution with CaCl or Cl ions. This is the use. It is used as a disinfectant, germicide. You can manufacture chloroform with the bleaching. Powder and then it will use for sterilizing of drinking water. It will make the wool unshrinkable and for bleaching cotton and wood pulp. So they are used. So if you see the structure, so one ordinary scientist who gave the formula, this is the calcium and Cl. Here charge is minus one. This is the plus two, and this charge will be OCl is minus one. So this will be your plus one, and this is your, your this will be your plus one. Minus this will be your minus minus two. Clear. So, here is uh, plus 2 is there, this minus 2 is here, so it will be OCL is minus 1. So, this is chlorine will be obviously, this will be 0, sorry, this will be 0, here chlorine will be 0. So, there are two chlorine, so one is minus 1, one is the 0. If you take the Bang, Clark and Clifford, uh, Clifford method, it is a mixture of calcium hypochlorite and basic calcium chloride. So, sometimes they ask questions. Now you see the abnormal properties of hydrofluoric acid, this abnormal properties, it is a highly uh, can say poisonous gas. So, hydrogen for the poisonous gas. Corrosive action on skin. It is existed as H2F2 even in gaseous state. It will form the two uh, series of salt, KHF2, which is called as free me salt and K2F2. It is not oxidized even by the strong oxidizing agents. It will react with silica, like this one. And SiF4 plus H2F2, this will give you H2 hydrofluorosilicic acid. And Na2SiO3 plus H2F2, it will give you this product. And uh, again, with calcium silicate, it is used to be this one. This is called as the etching of glass. On heating with aminal O2 and HTS4, it will not give fluorine. While with other halogen halides, it will give you X2. So like aminal O2, HTS4, and nascent oxygen, nascent oxygen react with other halides will give X2, but uh, HF is not given. Fluorine gas is not given. So here, fluorine not given. Uh, now, uh, fluorine uh, with nitric acid and HF. So nitric acid is acting as a base, while the HF is acting as a acid. With, uh, Nitric acid, HF become a acid, this is the base and you will get the H2NO3, so H2NO3 you are getting, so here is plus and F is base, it's a conjugate base. With silver fluoride and uh, uh, silver fluoride and uh, uh, lead fluoride, they are soluble in water, but chlorides and bromides and hydrates of silver, lead are insoluble in water. So these are only soluble, remaining is insoluble. Calcium fluoride and strontium fluoride are insoluble, so these two fluorides are insoluble, while other chlorides, bromide, hydrates are soluble, so this is also one of the important points. If you take the azeotrophs, in azeotrophs, uh, an H2O2, the boiling point is 120, with HCl, you can see 110, HBr, HI, so this is the halide composition. So HF2 is 36%, while HI is 56%, and uh, with 47% uh, HBr. So this is also uh, forming azeotroph with uh, of hydroacids. So the other some of the important properties of hydrofluoric acids and other halogen acids. Thank you very much. So, how was the this lecture? Please give the positive feedback so we can improve in the lecture content. Thank you.